What's up peoples of ISC and elsewhere, this is Undefeatable Twilight. No, this isn't a story time video, I just wanted to do another little uh, ranty, nitpicky style video. But this time about something uh, rather specific. Namely, as you may have surmised from the title, about uh, video game walkthroughs. Now, let me first admit that I do use walkthroughs, some would even say overuse. I basically will pretty much always use a guide to um, get through a game because one, I am a perfectionist, I do not like um, missing stuff or doing stuff wrong, especially when it comes to video games. If I if I start playing a game like without a walkthrough and then later on I realise that I missed something, I'm in chapter 5 let's say and I missed something back in chapter 2 and now I can't go back to get it again I, I really don't like that, so um, I would I would much rather just use a walkthrough and make absolutely sure I get everything possible that I can, rather than missing it and having to go back and start over, because, you know, when I play a game I want to complete them as fully as possible. Uh, so yeah, so basically every time I get, unless it's a game that has, like, uh, absolutely no reason whatsoever for there to be a walkthrough, like uh, Tetris or something. Um, but, like, the first thing I do, is, like, as soon as I start up a new game, I'll, I'll watch the intro sequence, I'll play through a tutorial if there is one, and then, like, as soon as Control is handed the character, I will pause the game, look up a walkthrough, and go from there using the guide uh, to make sure that I don't miss anything. That being said, I have uh, seen several things that walkthrough writers do that really, really annoy me. And I'm here to, well, probably not do much, much apart from complain about them, but hopefully someone, will, a walkthrough writer, will watch this and take these things to heart. Probably not very likely, but I can, I can hope, at least. So, first thing, and this is the thing that really, really annoys me, I, I, I will avoid as best I can any walkthrough that does this like as soon as I see this it's like nope not using this guide I'm gonna use another one if possible that is when walkthrough writers insist on often in painstakingly minute detail describing every single thing that happens in every single cutscene in the game like you got like you see character A go into a room and he sees character B and C character C says hi, character B says blah blah blah, then he does this, and then he does that, and then these things happen, and then not. If I'm using a guide, I'm playing the game already, I can see the cutscene for myself. You don't need to tell me what happens in it, I'm already watching it. I probably already watched it as f <laughs> before I even read the guide. There's no reason for this whatsoever. Not only is it a massive spoiler, because you're telling everyone what's happening in the game, basically, but it's also completely unnecessary. You're playing the game, you can see it for yourself. Why would you need to do this? I honestly don't understand why walkthrough writers do this, it just baffles me. So, don't, you don't need to describe what's happening in a cutscene. I, can I cannot think of any situation where that would actually be useful. Like, if you don't, if you don't want to play the game and you just want to see what happens, just look it up on YouTube or look up a plot summary. You don't need a walkthrough to tell you what happens in a game. You just need a walkthrough to tell you how to beat the game. The cutscenes have nothing to do with that. So, yeah, there's no there's no reason for that. Don't do that, seriously. Second, please, 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 for the love of all the deities in the Pantheon, please learn the difference between left and right. I know that sounds like a very trivial thing, but when you're when your whole purpose is to guide a player through the game, you want to be as accurate as possible. And that means getting your directions right. I have seen so many walkthroughs, and this is not just uh, this is not just specific to Twilight Princess. I know that the Wii version of Twilight Princess was mirrored from the GameCube version, and therefore whatever is left on the GameCube version is right on the Wii version and vice versa. No, this has happened in a lot of different walkthroughs I've read, that people do not know the difference between left and right. They go... Uh, blah, 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 in this room on the right-hand side you will see a whatever, a treasure chest, whatever, and I'm going in there, the treasure chest is on the left, I mean, obviously that's, a, that's obvious that it's a mistake, but when you're, 
when you're doing like a maze, when you're walking people through a maze, you want to keep your direction straight. You don't want to say, okay, go up, up twice and then right and then up some more and then up three times and then left. And I go up twice, I go um, right, I go up and I left and now I'm at a dead end because you meant to say right, you idiots. So yeah, please get your direction straight. It isn't that hard. I mean, you don't... If you really don't know, you can probably look up a guide on... <laughs> look up a guide, ironically. Yeah, you can probably look up a thing on the internet that tells you which one is left and which one is right. But seriously, if you're doing a walkthrough, you should really learn <laughs> your directions. Same thing with east and west. East is right, relatively. If, if you assume that north is up, then east is right and, le and west is left, not the other way around. So yeah, again, it it's, would be trivial anywhere else, but with a walkthrough when accuracy... in is very important, especially in the terms of directing a player, then you really need to know, you really need to get your directions right. <laughs> right, yeah, right. very funny. No pun intended. Um, also, on the subject of mazes, uh, some things in games are randomised, as in every time you start the game, they will be arranged, or even every time you load a save file, they will be arranged differently. Uh, please learn, please know where these things are. I would recommend, if you're going to do a walkthrough, I would recommend actually playing through the game. This is what I do, actually, when I write guides. Um, I write, I play through the game as I write the guide, and then I play through the game again, following the guide I just wrote, and to make sure that everything is fine. That way you will learn when things are fixed and when things are randomised. Because if you, again going back to the maze thing, if you give a specific set of directions to get through a maze, because those are the directions that apply to you when you played the game, um, that's not going to be any help to anyone if that maze is randomised. And I know it's not really possible to walk some, to do a guide for a randomised maze, but you could at least mention that, uh, by the way, unfortunately this maze is randomised so I can't guide you through it. Because if you give a specific set of directions for a randomised maze, then more often than not, they're not going to work, and you're just going to confuse the people playing the game, or people using the walkthrough, or whatever, so. <sighs> yeah. Learn when, when things are randomised and when they're not. Number four, please, incl please make sure you don't miss out anything. If you say your walkthrough is complete, it damn well better be complete. I'm going to cite a specific example here because this happened to me recently. I was playing through uh, Mario and Luigi Dream Team Bros. Awesome game, by the way. Highly recommend it. Um, and I was using the a walkthrough which was said it was complete and even won the FAQ of the Month award on Game FAQ, so I thought it was pretty good. Um, but not only did it fall into this whole getting left, saying left when they meant right and vice versa thing that I complained about earlier, but also they left a critical thing out. Um, in Mario and Luigi Dream Team Bros, you, every single area has 10 attack pieces, which when collected and put together gives you a new special attack. I got to the end of the final dungeon, I'm not going to say the name, don't want to spoil anything, just before the final boss, and I had 9 out of 10 attack pieces. Uh, where was the 10th? It was in the dungeon, but it wasn't mentioned in the walkthrough. And I know this because I did a control F search and there were only nine attack pieces mentioned in the final dungeon section of the walkthrough, I counted. Uh, so yeah, the tenth thankfully wasn't that hard to find, but if it had, because this was the only complete walkthrough of the game, on game FAQs at least, they might have been some on other sites, I don't know. Uh, the other one was actually wasn't actually complete. It only went up to like the second or third area or something. I think. So, if the, if I hadn't been able to find it, I would have been wandering around this dungeon for ages, trying to find or wondering where this last attack piece was because it wasn't mentioned. If you're gonna, please make sure you get everything, especially if, when it comes to collectibles. If you're uh, styling yourself or advertising yourself as a complete walkthrough if you're saying that your walkthrough is finished then make sure it's finished if you're missing a collectible especially a very useful one because it teaches you a special attack which might be incredibly useful for later battles then make sure it's in there i mean i yeah seriously i just 
that's all I say really just make sure you make sure you include everything it's, it shouldn't be that <laughs> it should be that hard to, to to learn that if you're if you're guiding someone through if your purpose the purpose of a walkthrough is to make sure that the player doesn't miss anything so if the walkthrough misses something then obviously the player's going to miss it and then they're going to be confused because they don't have the thing that they should have had by now and keep in mind this is the final dungeon it's not exactly very easy to get through not only is the layout very confusing and hard to navigate but also the rooms themselves are hard to get through because of all the tough enemies and the obstacles you have to navigate through and everything switches you have to press and whatnot so if i didn't know where the where the thing was if it wasn't thank it was marked on the map in the in the game so i could find it relatively easily but it still took me a bit of time to figure out how to actually get to it because it was on an isolated island which i couldn't see any obvious route to um but yeah the that's why it was it would have been so much more useful if it was actually mentioned in the damn guide okay i think that's all i had to complain about but the number one thing is really something i really 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 want to pe want walkthrough writers to stop doing don't for the love of every single deity do not describe what happens in the cutscenes I know, I'm playing the game, I can see it. You don't need to tell me. It just, it really infuriates me. That is the one thing that will make me not use a guide if it does that. It was like, if I see, if I see any cutscene being described in a walkthrough, I was like, no, that's it, I'm not using that walkthrough. As, unless I literally have no other choice, <laughs> basically. Um, so yeah. That the other the others I can handle the other things are annoying but I can kind of handle but I really wish people wouldn't do them anyway but that number one thing is really it really really gets on my nerves so that's all I'm gonna do my story time video later today so until then see you guys everyone take care love and peace.